Julia Maser of the New York Times reports today's page one story. She joins me live now on the telephone. Uh, give us the headlines, the, the highlights here of what these women say occurred in 2013 in Costa Rica. The trip was an annual calendar trip, and they usually go overseas. This time it was to Costa Rica to a somewhat remote resort um, on the Pacific Ocean. The women were posing as they usually do in their skin, really skimpy bikinis as they usually do. Sometimes they're required to take off their tops to, to I don't know, put their hands in front of their breasts or seashells or a hat or whatever, um, which would have been fine with them because they knew what they were signing up for. However, the Redskins had invited sweet owners and sponsors on this trip. And those sweet owners and sponsors were all men. And they were given direct access to the shoot where they could see the women while they were posing. And that made them uncomfortable, but not as uncomfortable as they said, uh, felt a few days later when the team director for the cheerleaders asked nine of the 13, 36 cheerleaders to go out with sponsors that night, said that they were handpicked by these sponsors to basically um, go out to the mm -hmm. nightclub and entertain them. At the nightclub, a, a, a woman affiliated with the with the team who was a former cheerleader was encouraging these women to flirt and to drink alcohol with the sponsors. And that's where uh, many of these cheerleaders decided that they didn't want to come back as Redskins cheerleaders anymore. If there's one quote that jumps out from your reporting, it is that, according to one cheerleader, uh, they felt as if, uh, or this individual felt that the Redskins, quote, were pimping us out. What specifically provoked that? Well, it was the fact that, that the sponsors were allowed to, to choose nine of the women uh, and, and pretty much demand that they would show up at this nightclub and, and have a party with them that night. These women were tired. They were working. Many of them had 14-hour work days. Um, it's, you know, posing and, and practicing dancing. And plus, they didn't want to go out with these, these sponsors. They felt like it was, it, had, uh, it was more than just being nice to the sponsors or thanking mm -hmm. the sponsors for their time and money. It was flirting with them and, and drinking alcohol with them. And, and they felt like that was, like, like I said in the story, one of the women said it, was, it felt like they were being pimped out. Yeah, so that your reporting is about 2013 in Costa Rica. You also include in your reporting uh, in the New York Times the account given to you of women about a 2012 boat outing here in the States. Uh, what, what do women say occurred then? Yeah, they said that they expected uh, to go on a team bonding boat trip, um, and uh, they were told by their team director to show up at a certain place in Washington. When they showed up, it wasn't it wasn't a commercial party boat. It was one of the sponsors. Um, it was a, a yacht that was owned by a sponsor, and on it were strangers that they had never seen before, some men that they had never seen before. They all got on the boat, and um, evidently there was a lot of drinking. Men were uh, taking alcohol and squirting alcohol into the women's mouths with turkey basters. In another part of the boat, women were uh, participating in twerking contests where the men were throwing money at them, according to some of these cheerleaders. Um, and of course, some of the women participated, but mm -hmm. some of the women did not. And those women wanted to get off the boat ASAP, and they felt that that was unacceptable uh, but they shouldn't have to, to participate in that kind of activity that was team mandated. You spoke to a number of these women, obviously, evidence in your reporting. How would you describe their attitude about this uh, contemporaneously as they were going through it? Were they, did they feel afraid? Were they coerced? What, what were their emotions? Uh, you know, I think that they felt crushed that the Redskins didn't have their back. You know, it's not easy to be an NFL cheerleader. It uh, might look easy, but, you know, they have to They work out a lot. Of, we've reported before that they... Some of their workouts were in the middle of the night. Um, they were their weight was restricted. They couldn't eat very much. A lot of these women on the Redskins, at least the women told me, had a, a lot of disordered eating and laxative use. I mean, it, it was it was a tough job, and they felt like at least the Redskins could respect them enough to have them not entertain sponsors, entertain men who had handpicked them on top of everything else. I mean, they felt like they were treated like pieces of meat and treated like commodities. Let's start to unpack the possible legal ramifications with my colleague, ESPN legal analyst Ryan Smith. If you were going to make a claim here or you were a labor attorney, where would you start? I would start with a hostile work environment claim, especially if some of the women even made any hint of a complaint about what happened on that trip. You look at it this way, Bob. Cheerleaders have a right. They need to be protected by their employer. That is under the law. It's a precept that they need to protect cheerleaders from offensive contact from others. And you look at it like this. If, if there's offensive contact going on at work and it's happening over and over again, it's pervasive, mm -hmm. and it's made to be a condition of work, that's opening yourself up to a hostile work environment claim. Now, one thing I've seen in some of these cases in the past is, well, nobody complained. 
Well, if the idea is if they complain, they could lose their jobs. Or if the idea is, hey, if a fan touches you, if someone leers at you, if somebody's in a situation that's making you uncomfortable, you're supposed to smile, wave it off, deal with it. Or this whole issue with the escorts that was described in the New York Times piece, all of that stuff is beyond the pale. And all of that mm -hmm. stuff is not on the cheerleader, but it's on the employer to make sure that that never happens to any employee. You say the word employer, which on the other side of this right. arrangement means employee, but they're not mm -hmm. full-time, they're not players, they're not scouts, and they're not assistant coaches. Are they employees? And does that make a difference here at all? Uh, well, it's, an, it's a great question because you would, in many ways, they're considered as independent contractors. So there is a difference in some ways. And you'll see some teams claim, well, they don't have the same rights under the law. But if you have somebody working for your organization, that does, mean that, that does not mean that because they are independent contractors that, for example, they should be subject to offensive mm -hmm. contact and it's not up to the team to do anything about it. Everybody is required to, to, to have that sort of protection on the job. And you talk about wages. They're going overseas. They're working. They're not getting paid. There is a reasonable claim there to say that they should have been paid. And this has been a claim that's been going on a long time with cheerleaders. They get underpaid maybe $30, $40, $50 per game, things like that. Yeah not including the practice sessions and everything else, there's a real argument to be made that that needs to be changed too. But overall, the big thing is what is being done to make sure they're able to do their jobs in a way that is free from this kind of offensive and just abhorrent yeah. contact. 25 seconds. The NFL says basically it's a club issue. How immunized are they here? And can this splash back on them? It can blanch back on that, absolutely. And it's not a club issue. I saw them say, we want to work. They need to work now with clubs to make sure they have policies in place so women can step out and say, something is happening that's not appropriate to me. Do something about a team. Do something about an NFL to keep me safe.